Oh, welcome back to our weekly trade show. We're doing something a little bit different today because we heard the feedback from the waiver wire show. You guys liked us bringing in the trending stuff from Sleeper. All right, so I'd put the trending up, I put the trending down, tell you who are uh, the guys that are most relevant in fantasy football right now. I thought that chart gave us a, a really good way of like zoning in on that and talking about the dudes that people actually cared about. So I said, why not transfer that same energy over to the trade show? Luckily, we've got some good people in some low places that do some great work. And one of the sites that we'll be using today, which is completely free for you guys to use, these are just two smart-ass genius brothers that put this site together for free. They have a lot of cool data and uh, stuff that you can do with your league. It's on fantasycalc.com, and Gut will put that up on the screen. We're going to be using this trade chart, and let me kind of break this down for you a little bit, what you're seeing on the screen. And this is good for redraft. This is good for dynasty. They have super flex, as you can see, that like check mark in the, in the top right corner that you can kind of toggle around, bing, bang, boom. And what they do is you could see here in the top right corner, it says fantasy football rankings automatically generated from 1.5 million trades from real fantasy football leagues. Now they have fantasy calc integrated their API to different websites, sleeper and some paid leagues. I'm actually not sure exactly where they come from. I know they're from like more thorough and, and real fantasy football leagues. So they basically take all the real time data that's happening in trades and in leagues that are some paid, some free, but on more serious platforms for the most part. And, and they have a bunch of algorithms running, basically telling you how valuable a player is based on the market. So similar to keep trade cut where keep, keep trade cut basically has people flood to their website. And based on people like picking and choosing who they would rank players where, this actually takes it straight from league data. In my opinion, that's a lot more accurate because you can go on Keep Trade Cut and be like, just get this shit out of my face and click random rankings. You know what I mean? Like you ever do that? Yeah. Yeah, that this, happens this to me all the time. This is actually what matters and what's being done. Right, this is exactly. It's like what people pretend they care about and what people actually do are the differences between <laughs> the two sites. And again, this is not a paid plug whatsoever. It's just really good work done. And I thought it would help you guys the most if we used this website. So what you're seeing here on the X-axis is a player's value. That value is calculated based on moves, based on where these guys were drafted, based on uh, the, the value in different trades that are happening right now. It's not any bias. Like the guys who made the website are not telling you that they like Austin Eckler more than CeeDee Lamb or anything like that. It's just based on value and the moves that you guys are making in fantasy football leagues and a player value gets calculated based off that. The Y-axis is how often these guys are involved in trades that are happening. As you can see in the top right, it says 1.5 million trades are done. And we have a dude like Garrett Wilson at the top of this chart here, who's between 5 and 6%. So we're saying that if 1.5 million trades are done, 5 to 6% of them involve Garrett Wilson in some way. So we thought by using this chart, we'll basically be able to cover the dudes that are probably the most frequently asked candidates for trades, whether they're trades to send away, whether to, to trade for. I think we're going to try to uh, break down some of the most popular ones. We also asked you guys for some real life trades uh, in our Discord, which you can join for free. The link is down below, which we will break them down. And it's fun looking at all of these different charts and seeing the differences between Redraft and Dynasty, Superflex and, and Regular. And there's 30 day trend on the bottom, which I think is a little bit less helpful. This is within the last few days. So this really takes into consideration like the guys that are probably moving in your league right now. We're filming this Tuesday night. This goes up Wednesday morning. So there shouldn't be too much reverberation in the next you know 12 hours or whatever the 30-day trends are going to be a little bit crazier but you know you guys can go on to fantasy calc right now i think it's fantasy calc forward slash research or whatever we'll link it down below for you um, but it's a really cool website and we've yapped enough so i kind of want to get into it and start with you know the outlier up here gw dub so of course aaron Rodgers is out for the season and now garrett wilson is now dealing with zach wilson yeah, I mean... You, you love G-Dub. Like, he was your number six I, I going did. into the year. And I honestly, looking back on it, don't think it was a bad yeah, rating. Yeah, no, I still stand by that original take. It's just, now it's like, am I fighting for a guy that I just want to defend myself at this point? And obviously, he you saw the big play potential still there at any given week, especially against an elite defense. But if you also take away that, like, what was a 75-yard touchdown? Yep. The dude had, like, three catches. Like, it would have been an incredibly low day as far as like if i had to pick buy or sell I, I do think everyone is completely off of him i do think he is more of a buy low candidate than i would completely well sell. i mean he, here's the great part about this graph is it shows you that he's being traded a lot but yeah. it also shows you based on the value of the x and y axis like who are the guys that are valued pretty much the same as him 
Like you have Debo Samuel, who is around the same as him. You have Mike Evans. T. So these are all like still good players. Of course, T Higgins is ranked a little bit above him, which I would, I would probably would agree with at this point, but you know, you have a lot of quarterbacks in the one QB range, good players, TJ Hawkinson, stuff like that. So the, these, this is where people are valuing him around, like in this range. So you're, you're looking at more of like a mid to back end wide receiver too. It's and it's I'm torn because it's like, yeah, he was so big play reliant on Sunday, but it's like that's also might be the toughest defense he faces all year. So no, he might not get those big plays, but he also doesn't need to rely on them in easier matchups. So yeah, when I when I think about Garrett Wilson, it's like it's kind of twofold. The first thing that comes to my mind is okay. Where, what's the baseline for the Jets offense, right? Because I don't think we've really seen that yet. You had the yeah. first one against the Bills where it was just so much energy and momentum, yeah. and then you know the healing gets sucked out of the balloon. So I don't think that's a realistic viewpoint of uh, who the Jets are. But then like Brees Hall for nine yards on right. Sunday. Like, but I think it's more so, so like Dallas. So Dallas is probably the best defense in the NFL. So you're not going to face them all the time. You know what I mean? But they do have tough matchups. They got the Bills twice. They got the uh, the Patriots twice. Miami's turned out to be a great team. So like they will have tough matchups. So you can't just say like, oh, they'll it'll never be like Dallas yeah. again because they play tough ones. I think what, what probably helps is trying to look at like precedent of this. When have we seen really good talents play with shitty quarterbacks? And what happens more often than not is we find ourselves year after year being like, can't wait for this guy to play with a good quarterback. Mm -hmm. Terry McLaurin, first guy that pops to mind. DJ Moore, obviously DJ Moore is not as talented as Garrett Wilson on a like pound for pound basis. But Still a good player. If that's where he's at, like Terry McLaurin, DJ McLaurin, that's, you could live with that. A hundred percent. And th that's kind of the point. I and think you I, could argue he's better than them. I, I, the pl a player himself. Definitely better than but DJ you Moore. you could argue, even given Terry's situation, DJ situation, could you argue Zach Wilson's worse than what Mitch Trubisky was or not Mitch Trubisky, sorry, um, the Panthers. Uh, Teddy B. Sure, yeah. All Sam those. Darnold. He, he had, yeah. He's had like seven QBs. Yeah. I, I would say his situation is probably just as bad as DJ Moore, and he's a more talented player than DJ Moore. That being said, DJ Moore, despite all the hype, like I feel like year in and year out, always finished as like the wide receiver 22 to 30. People are always drafting him as like the 14, but he'd always finish there. Terry's a different story, I think. Terry is, if you're going to compare talent for talent, I think Terry's closer to the tier of Garrett Wilson. I would say Garrett Wilson might actually be better than Terry. Just, yes. you know, raw player. They're probably around the same. And Terry would frequently finish between like wide receiver 13 and 20, I would say. Mm -hmm. But he never hit that ceiling because his quarterback play didn't yeah. allow and him to. Unfortunately, we've drafted Garrett Wilson <clears throat> above Terry's ceiling at Garrett's own ceiling. Right. So you're not going to be able to recoup your losses if you're trying to sell him. But I also think if you hold, like, it's not a complete flop. You know, he, you're still going to start him every week. It's not some guy that you paid a first round, second round pick for. Now you got to throw him on the bench. It's just There's not people like upside. ranking him around like wide receiver 33 to 36. And I'm like, that feels, yeah, exactly. I get it. Like Zach Wilson is there, but Garrett Wilson will have huge. He'll be inconsistent. Like that, the, yeah. the it'll ebb and flow with I think last the New York week, Jets offense. I put him at like, 18 or 19 and that felt a little high and I got a little lucky with the big play but you but know that's what he's so good though he's gonna make plays have, yeah. like that you know yeah. he's gonna make those grabs one-handed in the back of the end zone like <laughs> oh, yeah. he'll end up scoring like eight or nine touchdowns but Agreed. the Jets will throw for fucking 15 so it's like oh he's got to get lucky it's like he's so good that he makes his own luck in a sense <laughs> yeah but it's like yardage and reception numbers are not going to be great so I would I would almost look at him the same way that you've looked at Terry McLaurin in the previous years where you're like all right probably going to finish as like the wide receiver 18 Take the good with the bad. If you want to move them, cool. I think if we compare him to, you know, the next outlier on the chart here is T. Higgins. Now, T. Higgins is up here, obviously, because he busted in week one. Big game in week <laughs> two. It week two. Crush it week two. But now there's like a ton of uncertainty around Joe Burrow and his calf. We don't really have any news about Joe Burrow's calf. This one is so hard for me to give like a concrete take on. I mean, you see Jamar Chase. We're going to get to him eventually, too, if we want to just bring him up now. Like, we just don't know. It's so easy to say they were bad last year. They started 0-2. They could do it again, but it's like, is, is it the same situation? It's not. like It's because he's hurt. It's not because they're off to a slow start. It's because they're straight up not the same. And that's just hard to give a statistical, logical take on, like, how to weigh that out. Yeah, I, I, I feel like um, Burrow's calf is going to be a little bit of a problem for a while. Yeah. And I feel like both of them... <clears throat> Burrow, Higgins, Chase are maybe second half of the year players, but I also don't want to like overstate it because I think you could probably come back as a quarterback. Th there was a lot, a lot of weird shit. Going. I can't imagine like the entire first two weeks. The reason they looked so flawed was because of Joe Burrow's calf. Oh, agreed. There were other problems going on there. Higgins looked great last week, and th this was something that I feel like a lot of people kind of pointed out going into the year was like Higgins and Chase, two great individual players. 
very rarely produced at the same time while on the field together. Mm-hmm. They they kind of had trouble both hitting their ceilings, and I think and a, a lot of people say they rely on themselves and the raw talent. Like there's this isn't some fancy scheme like uh, Puka Nakua where they just get open and plays are made for them. They have to manufacture it themselves. It feels like yeah. I um I actually think I had a comment today on a video that was like Jamar Chase or Puka Nakua, <laughs> and I was like, fam. <laughs> so let tempting. me get back to you though. Yeah. You know what I mean. <laughs> Um, so with T Higgins, let me, let me ask you like straight up Garrett Wilson with the uncertainty, let's say, cause you, you got to play fantasy with uncertainty, right? Like you get this trade offer in your inbox, Garrett Wilson or T Higgins. I think I would be super stubborn if I would want Garrett. I think I'm stubborn on that. I think I'd agree with you. Okay. I think I would say Garrett there. I just, I have, if push comes to shove, one of these guys, let's say just all everything shits the bed in their current situations. I just trust Wilson to be the yeah, one agreed. to like come out as, as the bigger man on top there. Agreed. I just think he can make the big plays and make shit happen there. Like, cause Higgins, it's like Wilson, like you're fighting the quarterback battle. That's known. Higgins, like you're fighting the quarterback situation itself. I don't want to say Burrow's bad by any means, but like you're fighting an uphill battle in the offense and you're also fighting Jamar Chase. Like it, it just feels like there's more things you have to get. There's through. definitely a lot of moving parts there, yeah. but I almost feel like since he's kind of just been that team for years now, it's like, Oh, there's all this Fair. bullshit going on. And they keep producing it. Like I'd still want to see Higgins, but I, I do get, I'm a little bit nervous about the Burrow situation. Do they, do they have him push through it and re elevate that injury risk? Does he just sit and for the next three weeks? I think Monday, the next game, is against Puka and the Rams. Monday night, so it's like... It is, you're right. It's not an easy game where it's like, a, like you still... like The decisions need to be made, and it's really tough. It, I don't know. I'm concerned. The next highest player up on here is actually Raheem Mostert, and I think this is a good player to call out because his value's low as well, too. So it's like... It's a combination of... Um, I'm surprised it's low. Me too. The fact that it's all the way down here. I guess you look at like Brian Robinson and maybe this does not account for uh, as much like the last 24 hours or so. And I'm sure like okay. over the next 24, it'll update more and more and more and they'll keep moving down. But I think realistically, like Raheem Mostert was a 10th, 11th round pick. He didn't have like a super good week one. Mm-hmm. So it's like slow to adjust. But Raheem Mostert, if this is true, like based on this chart, which again is pulling from real leagues on sleeper, if, if his value is really all the way down here where these other guys are, actually, there's a lot of good players down here. Raheem Mostert, Brian Robinson. I, like, refuse to believe it's this low. Like, I, I think. But. Uh, but if you can buy him, apparently around <laughs> Jerry Judy range, like. Well, yeah, DJ Moore, Rashad White. I, th- yeah. I think that's probably around the right okay. range because people still have their skepticism about Raheem Mostert, you know, being able Injury, to hold up for yeah. the entirety of the year. They're definitely a pass offense when the defense dictates it. But I also think this means that if his value is in that range, like, I mean, do you put Raheem Mostert in, in my eyes, like Raheem Mostert should be closer to that, like 4K to 5K range. Yeah, he, he's he's shown enough for me to want to throw him into a tier where like we probably should have been drafting him in the sixth round, maybe. Right. He's clearly got the role. And I'm thinking like, yeah, I, I, I want to. I want to buy this dude. I want I, to start sending offers for him. I think I'm not going to compare him to Kenneth Walker, mm. but he's like smack dab in the middle of Kenneth and Khalil Herbert for the most part. I think he needs to be way closer, closer to, to Kenneth. K9. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, sure. but that that's like the, the nature of trades in redraft leagues. It's like the name is sticky oh, for like yeah. two to three weeks. <laughs> and like, as the weeks go by, they get a little bit less sticky and a little mm-hmm. bit less sticky and people stop being obsessed with them. But most are getting all the carries in that backfield. Devon A. Chain, Finally had his first game on Sunday. He had one carry, I think. Shit. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Wilson, I guess, eventually will be back, and maybe that's, like, holding people off. But Do we think, like, rumors could start up again? With JT? Yeah. it's Def- Definitely. I, I think it's maybe all this spot. stuff starts to starts to factor in. But Marie Moser kind of feels like uh, a little bit like the Puka of running backs. Where yeah. just, I feel really confident for the next month we're going to get high-end production. I was just going to say three to five weeks, I think you can definitely – count on him for sure yeah I've, I've Raheem Mostert's definitely a uh a buy for me we've got AJ Brown all the way over here it looks like he's involved in a little bit less than three percent of trades his trade value is very high at around the I'm seven thousand so range torn on him like if you look at the between the splits of him and Devante like they're identical yeah like there is no no one's really being favored more in routes and targets targets per route no matter how you want to break it down I want to say their a dot one of them had a higher one it might have been Devante just probably Devante at this game. point because he's gotten a lot of big plays downfield but as far as actual like shares and attention it's the exact same and I don't I don't know if that gives me confidence or concerns me like that is it gives does it give me confidence like oh AJ's due for his big game as well or is it concerning like Devante's eating just as much as AJ and we spent so much more on him 
Yeah, I think one of the problems now is it's it's possible that, okay, I, I look at New England, and New England's like sole purpose of that game was to make sure that they didn't connect on deep shots down the field. And then you move to week two, and I think Minnesota probably did something similar, and it's the reason why DeAndre <laughs> Swift, Swift kept eating. So I think teams are playing Philly to say like, hey, their best players are Devonta Smith and A.J. Brown, mm-hmm. as they fucking should. And I, th- I think we're seeing a transference of like the way the NFL is being played. And I, I, and I, and I heard this a lot on like podcasts throughout last year as, as the year went by, and it's like, why Mahomes and those guys don't take as many shots downfield because most teams are starting to play the cover two, the deep two mm-hmm. safeties. So you can't take it. You have to take the dink and dump stuff. And that becomes a problem with a guy like AJ Brown, who's right now averaging 9.8 yards per reception. Last year, he averaged 17 yards per reception. Yeah, it was... So it's almost double because they were taking those shots downfield. And if they don't allow him to do so, Jalen Hurts is a good enough quarterback that's going to say like, hey, we're going to win how we need to win. Like, A.J. Brown can, you know, have his temper tantrum on the and, fucking side. And this was kind of why, like, not to victory lap by any means, we're only two weeks in. Like, I was hesitant to draft A.J. Brown as a wide receiver six. I do think we swung a little too far past my concerns, like nine yards for reception. Like, he could drop from his 17 and still average 13 or sure. 14. And the passing game has to improve to an extent, like, because teams are also realizing we could guard A.J. Brown, we could shut them down. They're still going to beat us with their ground game, clearly. So I do think it'll bounce back to an extent. But this is... This is a little bit why I don't think he was ever worth the wide receiver six in the first place. Yeah, so uh, so you're a little bit worried about him going forward. Who would you rather own, Devontae or A.J. Brown? I think I would still have to stick with A.J. He's just more, like, pure alpha. And Devontae's, like, phenomenal. No discredit to him. It's just, I love Devontae. I wouldn't take him over A.J. Brown either, but I, I do like yeah. uh, uh, Devontae a lot. But that's the thing. Like, we are at the point where it's like, I'm not going to fight someone that picks Devontae. Like, yeah. it, it's fair. I get, let, let's jump back into Jamar Chase, I think, here, because Jamar Chase is not only attached to the tricky situation in Cincinnati now, but he's also put up a couple dud games in a row where it's like A.J. Brown, and then imagine if Jalen Hurts is dealing with a calf injury, right? Yeah. So Jamar Chase valued all the way up there again. That This takes into consideration a lot of draft capital going into the year as well as like trade values now. So he's still going to be considered a really, really high trade value guy. Maybe I'm a fucking sucker. Maybe, maybe I'm a sucker here. <laughs> But I'm probably moving Chase for... I, I might sell Chase for like 85 cents on the dollar right so now. So I actually had a trade, and this will bring up a quarterback, unless you want to save trades to the end. I just had a comment that kind of stuck out to me. Sure. It was... This guy was offered Lamar Jackson and Calvin Ridley, and he would be giving away Jamar Chase and Justin Fields. And I was like, kind of like, let me get back to you. Like, I don't... Okay, so that's, it's Lamar and Ridley on one side. I, I don't know the exact format, half PPR. I'm just assuming basic stuff. <laughs> it's, it's tight. I think I would probably... Ridley and Chase are not that far off for me. No. They're definitely not that far. Where, where's Ridley in this? He's pretty far down. So we definitely... We don't even know where his name is. He's here. So he's around 6,000. Okay. So he's around like where Jalen Waddell is, Um, one QB. This is, this is probably as close to like redraft rankings, I think, as we can probably get right now with a little bit of movement after the season started. But Calvin Ridley here, yeah, like I, I think going forward, if you look at the projection of Calvin Ridley, knowing what we know now, if we redrafted, I think next week for this episode, we should do just a pure redraft, like okay. redrafting yeah. the 2023 yeah, was, season again, knowing what we know past, now. Like speaking of Chase, Brown, Ridley, like how would you... Like if you're redrafting today, you don't think based on... I mean, you know how like all offseason, everyone was so like gung-ho on wide receivers? Yeah. Ridley's probably around that one-two turn if you're redrafting oh, today. Sure. You know what I mean? Like he's probably up there and... I mean, it Chase felt is spicy to take him at like the two, three. Yeah. Like that was oh, like, yeah. I, some, I remember people tweeting out like, oh my God, Ridley's finally got into the second round of these yeah. best ball drafts. But like, I feel about as good as Ridley tie with T law as, I mean, he, he's an, again, another inch away from a touchdown this week. And we're like, holy shit, Ridley's going crazy. So Ridley to chase chase in name value. And he, I even feel gross kind of saying that like, I'd still take chase over Ridley. I don't even know if I, if I had to make the decision, I would do that. They're close, and Lamar is obviously above Fields at this point. Um, so I'm, I think I'd probably lean Ridley. I think I'd lean Ridley and, and Lamar. And to be honest, like you know, this was meant to be a chase talk, but the Fields thing does concern me as well. Like, sure. So you are like taking double risk. Chase is kind of just like Wilson, where you just got to sit on him. Like I, I wouldn't be selling unless you get that sharp offer, like one we just mentioned. But definitely- that's what I mean. Like with a, a Chase, Chase and Wilson are different in the sense that you're not getting Cal, you're not getting a pure oh, thoroughbred agreed. for Wilson, but you would get it based on the name value for Chase. But I, I'm just saying, do not panic sell. Like that would be, the, don't make a reach. Like, should I trade Jamar for like Debo? Like uh, that's a little, that's just outrageous. You got any spicy players we want to talk about right now? I kind of wanted to buy Trevor Lawrence just because like he's put up two like, He's got less than 30 points through two games. And I looked, that's like his worst start, even since his rookie year. Are we talking about one quarterback leagues? One quarterback leagues. Okay. I don't I don't necessarily know that it's like, would you give up Brian Robinson, James Cook, or DeAndre Swift? 
for him? Uh, I'm kind of selling Swift. Like it really, t- it took okay. That that's a good conversation to have right both now. Gainwell and Scott to get to go out, and like, look, he crushed what he was given. You don't think he's the guy there now? I think he. That's the thing. I think he's the guy, but he's not going to be the only. Like, I think he's the number one possibly now, but there's still going to be a committee offense. Is my point? Yes. I don't think it's a committee as much as it's like Swift's backfield with other guys still involved. I I can't imagine they're giving Gainwell carries. I don't think and I don't think there's going to be other. Run, but what makes me feel confident in this is that Rashad Penny got no work. If yeah, Rashad Penny Rashad Penny was... feels like the only guy that could actually battle Swift for early down and like goal line ish work. And I think Boston Scott left the game too injured. I'm not sure what I, I don't remember yeah, what it yeah. actually was. Yeah, that's why. Regardless though, like Gainwell will have a role because they trust him when he's healthy. But I don't think it's going to be enough to like move Swift out of RB2 range from now on. It's like we were looking for who's going to be the guy in Philly's backfield. I mean, man, Swift just put on an all-time performance. He just had a career day. No, like, and that's the tough part. Like, we've seen it could not be more opposite of week one and two for him. Like, yes. even like 100 yards on the ground, no touchdown. Like, that's even an impressive day. But now he went for a buck 70, put up the TD. I, just given his history also being a little injury prone here and there and – Looking at them on the goal line, like there was no consideration. Like, let's give it to the back to punch yeah. him. Like, it's like we're sticking. That's with probably the, push, the scary push. part for sure. Yeah, but but I think yeah, I, I think that is scary. I do think again though, like the way that teams have played Philly so far, I think we're going to see a healthy dose of that. We're going to see a lot of it. That's why Mostert and Swift are both so good of fantasy values right now, is because teams are going to be saying, "Hey, you're not beating us with Hill and Waddle downfield. Hey, you're not beating us with AJ Brown, Devonta Smith downfield. We'll let you go six, six, <laughs> six. Six with with Mostert and and DeAndre Swift, and I think that could be the theme of their seasons. Being like, hey, our coach is good enough to adapt to the defense that that they're playing against us, and I think we're going to see that a lot. And yeah, and hard that, not to trust Swift. That's now. a good comp because they're both just speedy guys that you know they can hit the hole, they can bounce outside, whatever it is, and use their speed alone to break away. And Philly's O line is so good. Yeah, Philly's O line, Dolphins scheme, like it, it's a fair take, but I, I think when we're Given in that situation, I would definitely put him below Cook and Robinson, who we just mentioned. And I, I know that wasn't your question necessarily. Swift? Yeah. I would take both those guys over him. Swift, Robinson, Swift, Brian Robinson, James Cook, and Raheem Mostert. That's oh. really difficult. I actually, I like James Cook a lot. I was like fading him all summer and then mid-August or whatever, I kind of like turned it around. I'm like, okay, I like Cook and I have him on a lot of my fantasy teams actually this year. He's you, probably the four, the four for me there. Swift? Cook. Cook? Really? He's got no touchdown. Like equity. I, I was just going to say, though, like even in the early downs, we might agree like Swift might be their guy now. But like the one touchdown he got, do you think he gets that carry if both Gainwell and Boston are fully healthy? I don't know. It, I, can't, I can't answer that, no, to yeah, be honest. It, yeah. I can't answer that, but I think you could probably ask that with like any of these guys. James Yo, Cook definitely my, doesn't get him. That's my point. Like, if Jeff Wilson's healthy, does Raheem Mostert get him? If, it, Gibson's going to randomly get some fucking bullshit goal line carries. Yeah. B Rob's been looking good. Though. He's looked great. Yeah. <laughs> B Rob. B Rob. There's there's still something in me that's like ah, it's a Washington offense. Mm-hmm. Don't invest like too overly. Oh, this week against Buffalo, them. he's going to put up the donut. Yeah. This work. is the week that we're like B Rob must start. Must start. Yeah, must no. start. Fucking done. Yeah. Cool. We just saw Josh Jacobs against Buffalo have negative two. Like now we're like B Rob's that's. That's not B Rob. I like all four of those guys, but my what I, I I would hold on to Swift if I got him. I'm not I'm not looking to ship him at, at like a, a high end price or anything like that. I I think you just probably have someone that you can put into your lineup as a nice RB two for like the rest of the season. That's fair. I, I think he'd be my three below. I think I would go B Rob Cook Swift Moster. Moster is mainly just because of shelf life. Like I I, I am concerned. It's hard. A lot of it does have to it does like I guess factor health in there. But I feel probably most comfortable. With B Rob's volume upside, mm-hmm. I feel like in volume, I, in terms of comfortability, I would I would rate them B Rob, James Cook, I Mostert, to, Swift, yeah. Mostert, Swift, probably. But like <sighs> upside on a weekly basis feels like Swift and Mostert just like take that crown. Yeah. Their offense dictates a lot of good. As far as like efficiency goes, like yeah, they're yeah. Travis Kelsey, I mean he's he's back. There's no way you're getting him at like a <laughs> discount right now. He only ran like 50 percent of the routes, and he's already leading the NFL in targets per route run. He's going to be such a monster for them. That's, what do you, what do you think about both of those? Like, Kittle's like, dude, please just be better. Like, I, I tried Somebody's finding... Somebody's got to do something. I tried finding a stat to be like, oh, he's still getting this. Like, it's bound to bounce back. Like, I couldn't find anything. I just want him to be better. There's like, involved. there's like, yeah, dude, I don't I don't really know what to say. Cause I it does say- feel like this week, Thursday Night Football against the Giants, he could get a crappy touchdown. Who? Kittle. Who? Niners versus Giants Thursday. And it's like, okay, we're all back in, but it's like, still, I don't... There, there's part of me that's just like, oh, there's too many mouths to feed there, but it's like... 
plenty of tight ends eat when there's other mouths to feed there. They yeah. just like get it done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I actually want to bring up one other person that I, I have no idea where we're going to be able to find him in this shit show of, of names. Um, Alexander Madison. So Alexander Madison. You called it. So I said, I mean, I didn't really call it. I, I, that part was easy to see fair. coming. You could say I called it if he starts doing well over the next two That's to three fair. weeks. But in last week's <laughs> trade show. the Chargers, show, though, this week. Yeah, in, in the trade show last week, I was like, Madison's going to have a bad week against Philly. So he starts the season off back-to-back bad games. Everyone's going to hate him. And then he's got four easy games. Chargers, I think the Bears, KC, and, and someone else, whatever. Matchups are much easier. He's also been getting so much usage. He is like running all the routes. He's in on like two and four minute drills, which is really surprising. Makes no sense. He's yeah. getting a lot of targets. They're not converting into anything, but that's kind of who he always was. He was like, he was getting a lot of volume and in good game scripts, he will get that volume, I think. So I think better days are ahead. And now where his value is, like people just think he stinks. He couldn't be lower. He couldn't like, be lower. This will be the cheapest. And he, he looks bad too. Like there, I, I admit that, but like, I don't think you'll have to pay more than, I, I think your best bet is like probably moving uh, wide receiver and oh like I, I'd move Gabe Davis off this previous yeah. week for Alexander Madison definitely any of these rookie Dude. wide receivers for sure Kadarius Tony <laughs> I'm not sure why anyone would want to buy him but if you could package up like a Khalil Herbert and uh, a Gabe Davis or Romeo Dobbs or something for Alexander Madison I'd, I'd be in on something like that yeah I agree I, I think the volume alone that's what you had to buy into at this point like yeah like he'll score touchdowns there are definitely better days ahead and it's not like we're seeing his usage start to dip in in favor of ty chandler or mike boone or any of the guys mm-hmm. there in in minnesota right now so and if you took him like there's a good chance you didn't reach on him. he probably spent like what an eighth round pick what did he get up madison to? seventh six I, I think he went a little early i think he started going like fifth six oh, so you did use some capital on him right now so it's like it's, guess, it's not a freebie i mean still I, I you can't sell him by any means if the, you're on the end that owns them you'll get $4. Yeah, like. but the good part about the good part about Madison kind of is like it, it it's hard to trade for players, especially this early in the season, because when guys draft players, they like they do it because they like the players. Mm-hmm. But there's just not even me saying it's a good idea to draft or trade for Madison. It's not me being like, no, I believe in him so much as a player. It's just like he like stinks the, right now. The James Conner role almost like just Conner looked kind of good this week. No, yeah, yeah, what but that's hell? just kind of the what like, the hell the same math like. Yeah. It's just going to get the work, and it's got to go somewhere. Should we talk about the Rams for a second? Just like just Puka, the Jeremy Lin Puka, Lin Sanity? Puka, Puka Sanity? Dude, I'm like, I'm making my rankings. I'm like, dude, this guy's top 15. And it's like, I don't even know. I don't know if I have him too low. Like, right, because you put him in top 15, there's going to be teams that are asking you like, yeah, do I start Puka as my wide receiver <laughs> exactly. three? It's like, fam, Puka has to be in your fucking no, yeah. lineup right now. I kind of think he has to be in the wide receiver one. What's What's crazy to me is like, he could take a step back and like, the targets, like, even a little bit. He's yet to score. Like, that yeah. could just flip his... Like, he could be having an okay day and then throwing the touchdown. That's the like, craziest part. The Rams offense having so much success. And from the trivia game we were playing before, yeah. Matt Stafford has one, one passing <laughs> exactly. touchdown. Kyron's eating Kyron has four touchdowns total. Puka doesn't have a touchdown. Tutu doesn't have a touchdown. Like, none of those guys have scored yet, which is, like, the craziest part about it. Puka, Puka's one of those dudes, like, especially in redraft. Like, I can understand why you get trade crazy in Dynasty. Because you're always looking for value to look like compound. Yeah. In redraft, you're on a one-year sprint. Why are you trading a good player? Like, this is the guy that's going to get you wins right now. And he's going to be good when Cooper Cup comes back, too. Maybe he's not Cooper Cup level of good, but he's still going to put you up wide receiver, two. Even three numbers is still something you could throw into your lineup and feel good about on a weekly basis. Yeah. Selling Puka just is fucking insanity. That and, like, Stafford can't couldn't look more dialed in. For like, real. Like, this dude wants to show he's worth the bag all right let's move over to over the discord you guys can join us we have the bg fantasy discord we have the bg nfl trivia discord we told people to drop a whole gang of questions in both so Udati, 12 team redraft half ppr gibbs plus drake london for isaiah pacheco and addison i think on the surface on the surface you see gibbs in london and you say of course yeah, I'm that's what you were about to exa- say. A hundred percent. I don't know if you can convince me off of it. So I'm, I'm kind of seeing. I like. To, I'm starting to like to use this phrase for whatever reason. Two ships passing in the night. So so wise. So uh, beyond my years, <laughs> people have been telling me, even though I'm like 45 years old. Pacheco, he just took basically every carry in the backfield, right? He's been working his way back. He missed all of summer. Didn't get much work in the beginning of the year. This Sunday, he got. Every carry in that backfield didn't turn into much. I think we went like 12 or 70 or whatever, but he's going to become more and more the guy as the season progresses. He's going to be, they don't have like weapons in that offense. It's basically Kelsey and whatever they use in the backfield, which is Pacheco. Addison can only go up as well. I mean, he scored two big plays so far. And so tell me this, um, 
Drake London, right, from this point going forward, does he finish as the wide receiver 24 or better at PPR? I think he's, like, between 20 and 30. So I guess based on that, I would say no. But if he's, like, 24, 25, 26, that's kind of where. Okay. So I would say reasonably, yeah, that's probably right. I think it's probably 25 to 30. There's just going to be games where he literally goes one for 19. I think that's just going to happen, and that kills fantasy. Addison is running 60% of the routes. Kid Giles wants a 95% guy. That's going to flip sooner or later. And we've already seen what Addison can do on minimum work, right? Mm -hmm. And when he becomes a full-time player and is getting six, seven targets a game, in an offense where Kirk's throwing the ball 40, 45 times a game, Addison could be a top 24 wide receiver. He's had such a hot start to where, like, he could have the London type of game. It's like, he'll be okay, and he'll yeah. only get better. So, that's what I mean with that. Like on, I on, think if Arthur Smith wasn't the Falcons coach, this could be such a different conversation. Of course, but but you have to be realistic yeah, here, exactly. you know? Yeah, I agree. And then I look at Pacheco, who is starting to get more work, more and more work. Gibbs, we'll see what happens with David Montgomery. They did just call someone up from the practice squad, so he might miss a game. I just think we know what Gibbs' role is here. Sure, it might, like fluctuate from week to week and maybe one week he'll get 15 touches and then the next week he'll get 11 but I don't think we'll ever see like a 20 touch game out of him at least not right now I don't think they're comfortable giving him that um and I and I think like obviously I'd take Gibbs over Pacheco just straight up for the rest of the year but I do think the London Addison conversation is a, a realistic one to have I think at the end of the day I'm just playing devil's advocate and I would definitely take the Gibbs in London side but I do think yeah I, I do think when you look a little bit closer like it's easy to see Drake London and be like Drake London but it's also easy to look back to week one when he caught zero fucking passes, you know, and those games are going to happen in the Falcons offense. So the, I don't way, know. the way I see it, I think is like London and Addison could both sneak into that wide receiver two top 24 range and Pacheco. I think we both agree is just RB two. That's his value. Yeah. Gibbs has if an that, upside. Yeah. Could he be RB one? Like that's, it's a very big could if and, and but, but just with yeah. that upside, that's kind of the sway. I'm just saying there's, yeah, there's definitely a world where like Pacheco scores, he goes uh, 16 for 100. Yeah, two I will touchdowns say no one, week. the more we talk about, no one got fleeced. Yeah. But I definitely do still lean. Yeah. I, I think like comfortably, definitely the Gibbs in London side. But I really wouldn't be shocked if like over the next 15 weeks, this side outscored that side six times or something mm-hmm. like that, you know? Oh, this is a good one. This is a dynasty. Dynasty. Zay Flowers for James Cook. I think I'd go Zay. I'd go Zay too. I think whenever doing like a tiebreaker like that, just the shelf life of receiver versus yeah. running back, when <laughs> especially it, running backs today. It's when like, it's not like a an elite running back, I just mm-hmm. I, I think we've almost seen enough from Zay to be like, okay, maybe he's not a wide receiver one, but he's going to be like a player in the NFL for yeah. quite a long time. Twelve team full PPR. I traded JT, Joe Mixon, Chris Godwin for Josh Allen, Devonte Adams, Brian Robinson. I'm kind of I, I start when I see this many players, I try to start to break it down into like who's the best player in the trade. Who's the worst player in the trade? And is everything else just kind of like even? So for me, the left side, Mixon and Godwin, pretty comfortably feel like the worst players in the trade, right? Like Mixon is just such a floor player. Godwin and Mixon are almost like the same player in wide receiver running back form. It's scary because that might be true in the fact that JT himself isn't the worst, but it's like, you, we just don't know. That could be the worst situation. Like, does he still want to hold out? Does he not get traded? Like, like I'm taking Brian Robinson over Mixon straight up right now. I'm taking Devontae Adams over Godwin, of course, straight up right now. And then Josh Allen, JT, I think, like, both were two, three-round turn guys. And maybe you take JT now that we're, like, two weeks into the pup list or whatever, like, by a little bit, but probably not even. I think the right side of that trade kind of smashes I it. I think, I mean, Josh Allen's just such a haymaker in that. It's like, I don't know what, like, you might have, you could have dropped B-Rob and be like, all right, now let's talk about this trade. Like, yeah, yeah, I think yeah I 100%. Want. B-Man, 14-team, half PPR, need to upgrade running back, give Puka or DJ Moore and Sharbs for Mixon. God, Who do you like oh rest of God. season more, Puka or DJ Moore? Puka, but uh, Puka for sure. But look no. at that guy's running backs. Sean Tucker is a starter. Ain't no way. No, 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 no. Oh, wait, that's his side? Yeah. Oh, Demont's hurt. Sean Tucker's hurt. He's down bad. Ayuk Waddle are on the bench, Oh, I mean, too. he's got Aaron Jones on IR. Okay, Aaron Jones should be back hopefully soon. Um, I I'm I'm okay with DJ Moore and Sharps for Mixon. Like I don't I don't love Mixon as a player, but I do still think his floor is really high when uh, Burrow's back there and healthy. Yeah. The only problem is like y- you need an upgrade to running back now because those guys like Montgomery and Jones are not healthy. I don't know if Burrow's healthy right now. You know, I don't I don't know if like Mixon getting into your lineup mm-hmm. right now, or they could lean on him more though because Burrow's out. So. I, I would not give up Puka and Charles for Mixon, but can 
Can you click on his team? Yeah, you also have a lot of firepower, dude. Justin Jefferson, dude, like Puka. Waddle and Ayuk are on the bench. Yeah, like, probably because they're maybe banged up. But I, I think you can upgrade it even more, to be honest. I think you could maybe even package two wide receivers. I think you could look at packaging. Um, I think you have the right idea, though. Like yeah. DJ Moore and Zach Charbonnet for mix and make sense. But I think you can upgrade that. I think you can go with like Brandon Ayuk and Charbonnet or... Like, if you could go shop for, like, a B-Rob right now. Right. Or any of the guys. Yeah, those four we were talking about. Moster, B-Rob. You Crook. can do... I think you could do more than that with those... With this... Uh, like, obviously, Justin Jefferson's untradeable. But package, like, Puka with Charbonnet. Um, and if you want to throw somebody else in there, whatever it is. Like, someone not too, not too valuable. You can go up in the tier at running backs. You could look at dudes like... I mean, to be honest, I don't think ETN's, like, a crazy... That's that's a great that's a great pull. I didn't even think about that. Uh, yeah, see if see if he wants to get rid of like ETN someone someone in that range. I'm trying to run through the teams right now. Actually, what do you think about like a Jacobs? I was just about to say you couldn't get Jacobs. I don't think with DJ Moore and Zach Charbonnet, but no. if you went like Puka and Charbonnet, you might be able to get Josh Jacobs. Like those are the trades I would try to look up to. But Puka and DJ Moore feel like they're different tiers right now, so use that to your advantage when like stacking for other um, options. Yeah, Let me pull up the teams. I, I definitely value Puka over DJ Moore more. But don't feel like you are are not allowed to separate from Nakua because based on your wide receivers, it doesn't matter. Like you could lose. You could sneaky also look to move DJ Moore for like uh, Tyler Algier. I think Tyler Algier is like kind of still a good player well, to about, buy on. I don't think I would. I don't know if I'd sell DJ Moore for him. Like Josh Kelly's like no one wants him anymore. Like you could. I wouldn't sell DJ Moore for no, him, no, no, but no, I do no. think he's a decent target. Yes. That. Um, like if you could do a swap almost. James Cook could be a good target. Padding yep. a good wide receiver with a running back for him. Rashad White kind of falls into that range. Any of those guys Alexander that you feel... Alexander Madison. <laughs> I mean, honestly, <laughs> you could try to flip DJ Moore for Alexander Madison or something like that. Anyone who falls into that range that's like pretty good that you know you'll get like decent RB2 range from, that's where you do the DJ Moore plus Zach Charbonnet. Once you add in a piece that you feel really comfortable with, the Pukas, the Waddles, the Iukes, you got to make sure you're getting someone back that you know is going to produce for you. That's kind of the way I would look at that. Definitely got options, though. I would be pretty confident in your situation, even with the thin RBs. Yeah. All right. Um, I think we're going to wrap up there. Any other dying words? That's it. That's all she wrote. <sighs> Sweaty again. I know. We, I was about to say, as let's always, cook on the fan. As always. All right. Uh, well, that's going to be the trade show for this week. We will be back maybe next week with a trade show, but I do think it would be kind of fun to redraft. A 2023 draft based on what we know following this upcoming weekend's games if you want to see that let us know you want the trade show do you want the draft i think the draft would be more fun and then we'll get back to the trade show right after that all right so i'm telling you to tell us but we're already fucking telling you what we're gonna do i love you guys subscribe if you're new here hit thumbs up button if you enjoyed see you next time